Today we're going to talk about how to relieve tension in your neck, shoulders, and hip flexors. I'm Risa Morimoto, your host. I'm an integrative nutrition health coach and you're watching Modern Aging where we chat about innovative and holistic ways to elevate our health and well-being as we age. If you're new to the channel, I'd love for you to subscribe. All you got to do is click on that little red button below with that little bell next to it to be sure to be notified whenever a new episode is uploaded. Uh, if you haven't checked out our website, go to thisismodernaging.com for all of our latest articles and podcasts and videos and the like. So today my guest is Christine Koff. She is a physical therapist. She's the founder and CEO of Aletha Health. And she's also the inventor of the knuckle and the hip hook. And you're going to learn how to use these and why they're going to be a game changer in your life. Uh, we all suffer from various forms of muscle tension, whether it's, you know, from sitting down too much, it's from working out too much, it's, you know, just modern society has created us to be these beings where we're constantly hunched over. So today, Christine is going to show us the importance of releasing those muscles and how we can do that with these tools. So check it out. Hi, Christine. Thank you so much for joining me today. Hello. I'm so happy to be here. I am very happy to be here because, oh my God, this is like, seriously, my new best friend. <laughs> and this guy, oh my God, like seriously, game changers. Um, so we're going to talk about how we release these tense muscles because all of us suffer so much, right? From so much pain that we don't realize that we could actually fix ourselves in many ways. But before we get to that good stuff, uh, I want to hear about you and how you came to this. I know you're a PT. Um, so tell me a little bit about your journey and your story about how you came to be an inventor being a PT. <laughs> Who knew, right? Um, yeah, so I've, I've been a physical therapist for over 20 years and always been a hands-on physical therapist, which not all physical therapists are. I was very lucky to be trained in hands-on techniques from the beginning of my career and be mentored by some amazing, amazing uh, therapists. So in my experience of really working on people's bodies and also kind of being that scientist trying to figure out the, like why, why things were happening with each of my clients, I was realizing that there was these certain patterns that were emerging with people. Um, and we, you know, we, we're all experiencing the repercussions of being a modern human in this modern world, which results in certain areas of our body that get overused and become tight and kind of, you know, restricted in, in, in certain areas. And those two areas of our body are our hips and our, our necks and our shoulders. And I call this the primary core down here and the secondary core up here because it actually is the core of our body and protects our nervous system and our brain and the most essential organs and things that are the most important to us. So what I was recognizing through this experience of all, seeing all of these clients was that almost everyone had tension in their neck and pecs, their neck in the front of their shoulders, and in their hip flexors. And that that was actually at the root of problems in other areas, maybe shoulder issues, maybe feet issues, like the mechanics of the body lend itself like one thing connects to another, connects to another. Right. So, you know, it kind of became like my mission to really figure out how to help people with these areas. And, you know, I'm one person with one set of magic hands that can only do so much, you know, but yet there were millions of people out there that were suffering for attention in these areas and, and creating all kinds of issues. And therefore, it became my mission to really figure out how to create a tool that works because there's a lot of tools out there that don't work. Um, that would help address these areas of the body. So why don't we start with the hips? Because there are many, many people with hip issues. Yes. So talk to me about physiology um, a little bit. Like, what's going on? Like, why are all we, ha you know, I know we're all sitting way too much. Yes. Um, which could be causing a lot of these hip issues. Like, we're not out in the field and, you know, moving around all the time. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. so yeah. What's it, so tell me, because I didn't even know about these muscles. Until, until I got the hip hook. I mean, yeah. I know, I've heard about the psoas and the iliacus. I was like, what? This is my new, this is my little friend, my little model. <laughs> I was just love it. Call today and explain a little bit about what's going on. So this is, so this is your, the front of your body. Here's your spine. This is actually just half of your, your body. Your other pelvic bone is over here. It's missing. But this is your Sexy. pelvic bone. 
Yeah. <laughs> you don't want this to happen to you. Um, <laughs> this is your, your pelvic bone and your, your, your leg, your, your femur, right? So this is your hip joint. And this, this is the core of your body, right? This is, the, this is the, where your organs are. Um, this is when you say you do core exercises. This is, you know, typically the area that we work on because alignment, strength, stability, and mobility in this area of our body is important for the rest of our body to work well. Think of this like the foundation of your house. If this is not aligned and this is not happy, then the way your legs work and all the way down to your toes and the way your spine is lined all the way up to your jaw, you know, will not be happy. So if you think about this area of our body and why people have so many issues here, it is because this is our essential foundation. And some of us have gone through life where we've had various injuries to this area of our body. Maybe we've had trauma to this area of our body. Maybe we have had maybe gut issues or maybe reproductive issues that have affected this area of the body. And then if you haven't, if you're not in any of those categories, you consider yourself very lucky at this point, um, but you may be experiencing stress. And this is one of the primary areas where we hold tension when we're experiencing stress. This is what, this is the area that would kind of become tight or contracted when you curl up in a ball to protect yourself. It's your hip flexors. Um, so, and then there's activities like running and cycling and hiking that can also create tension in this area. And the primary muscles that get tight are these muscles here in the front of our hip. Um, this is your iliacus right here. And this is your psoas, which actually is a cut off, <laughs> but it goes all the way up and attaches to your, your, the, your spine, your lumbar spine, all the way up here. Wow. So the psoas connects to your spine. It connects way up here to your spine. And so that allow so these two muscles allows you to bend or no they're not yeah so you, these muscles will lift your leg up if you were in a mar like you're standing and you march you lift your leg up that's your hip flex flexion so that would be your hip flexors they would do that 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 function they would also be responsible for turning your pelvis down so if you're like say you're lying on your back and you go to sit up with your legs out in front of you you use your hip flexors to get up. Um, but most of what your hip flexors do actually, and a lot of people don't understand this, but most of what they do is they help stabilize this area of your body. So it's helping to stabilize your, your, your spine and your pelvis, your SI joint and your hip because they cross over all of those joints, trying to kind of hold things together and make sure that your joints work well. But then when they're tight, then they, you know, then it's a whole different cascade of, of events that, that happen. Why hasn't this been part of physical therapy or any kind of massage therapy for decades, right? Like this is probably something that doctors have known about. Yes. But you're saying that when, you know, you invented this because <laughs> it didn't exist, <laughs> right? And um, you didn't have a tool that could yeah. get in to where you needed to in order to release the muscle or whatever right. it is, right? Yeah, this area, so this is, you know, there's a lot of reasons. I have hypotheses for why this has not been a mainstream treatment. But for in my experience, um, you know, the muscle is something that is not addressed by most practitioners. And I think it's because it's in the abdomen. And especially in our country, we're very shy about touching our stomachs. It's like this area from like our neck to our pelvis, like nobody or you know, our hips, nobody touches. Right. You know, we just don't go there. And, you know, it's an area that want, is begging to be explored, is begging to be touched and rubbed and cared for. So I think that that's one piece of the puzzle. The other thing that I think is really important is, you know, I mentioned this is the iliacus and the psoas muscles. Together, they can be called the hip flexors, like a lay term. But a lot of times these muscles are called iliopsoas. They're kind of grouped together, which means that if people are addressing, let's say, their psoas, maybe getting work done in their psoas, which is a bit more common, they think they're addressing the iliopsoas, but they're actually missing one whole muscle, which is the iliacus. And the psoas is a little easier to get to because it's just, you know, you just have to push, you know, directly into your abdomen, whereas the iliacus, you need an angle because it's kind of on this surface. And so if you're not, if you're just lying on a ball or you're using, you know, pressing directly in, 
it's not going to be touching the iliacus. And if that's not addressed, then your results will be um, short term. You know, one thing I do want to mention, too, is, you know, along this question of like, why are we not treating this and why are we not addressing this? You know, there, there's a there's a misunderstanding or a partial understanding about the role of muscle tension in our body. Why muscle tension? Why do we have knots? Why do we have tightness in our body? And how that tension really impacts the function of our body and our nervous system. You know, mental tension and physical tension are two sides of the same coin. And it's something that, you know, is not being addressed with enough vigor. You know, there, you know, there there is issues with even the hip joint itself and development of hip arthritis as a result of muscle tension. And if we release that tension and we figure out how to relax that, it can make a huge impact in whether or not you need a hip replacement, for example. Right. It's part of my frustration because Western medicine tends to be very siloed, right? We see yeah. specialists for every little organ that we have yep. instead of us, you know, as a holistic being and how, you know, our systems all affect one another, right? I mean, we're all connected. I mean, it's impossible not, right? Yeah. So of course, like you say, if your hips are hurting, you know, it's it's possible you'll have a knee problem or, an, you know, a foot problem or... Um, so, so tell me a little bit about this guy. So what was kind of the inspiration for creating it? Like, what happened to you where you were like, you know what, I need to get into the iliacus and I can't do with my fingers, I'm assuming. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it was partially frustration. You know, I was seeing people, you know, one-on-one, right, in my office and seeing that even people who had been to tons of therapists and had had, you know, lots of experiences in the system, all the last piece of the puzzle that they needed was they needed their iliacus worked on. And I was seeing in the office how when I put pressure on their iliacus, changed the relationship that that muscle had with the brain, the brain decided, oh, I can actually let go of tension and, and relax a bit, and how that changed the mechanics of their entire body. I kept seeing that over and over and over again. And I became really frustrated because I knew every single person that came in to see me had never had their iliacus worked on, ever. And I knew wow. if, if that was my experience, I knew that the majority of the human beings out in this world were not getting this work done, right? And so I'm only one person, you know, I can only see so many people in a day. So I was like, how can I give people a tool that they can do this on their own? And I had tried all kinds of things. I mean, I'm telling you, balls, remote controls, spatulas, like, <laughs> you know, whatever, you know, whatever you can stick in there. And it was like awkward. And, you know, you end up hurting your shoulder trying to do it in the, in the whole thing. <laughs> and so I was like, how can I create something that would replicate what my fingers and my technique that I had created for this muscle? And because it's at, you know, an angle, when I'm releasing someone on the table, this is someone kind of lying down on the table, I'm pushing kind of at an angle to release the tension on that muscle. And there's nothing you can do to lie on anything that would push angularly. You know, this is why I created the hip hook so that you could lie on it. Um, here we can see maybe with this model. You're lying on it and then you push on the handle like this. So it rotates the tip about this pivot and puts that angular pressure right into the iliacus muscle. Whereas if you're just lying on it, you won't be able to kind of pin that muscle up against the bone. So this is just, you know, my way of trying to duplicate basically my hands so that I can get this out to more people and help more people in pain. So when you use this, right, and you put it into your iliacus muscle, how do you know it's hitting the right point? Is it because you're in excruciating pain? <laughs> You know what I mean? <laughs> or, and, and then how long are you supposed to hold it for? Because I know yeah. that holding it is important, right? Yes. It's holding it for, you know, however long you can hold it for, whether it's 30 seconds, a minute, two minutes or whatever, right? Yeah. So this, if you look at this model, you can see that this iliacus muscle, it's actually not, it's not a small muscle. If you take your hand here, I'll show you. <clears throat> If you take your hand on your hips like this, and then you put your hand right next to your pelvis, that's your, the size of your iliacus muscle. 
Oh, so wow. It's big, right? It's not small. It's just on the other side of your bone than, than your hand here, right? So there's lots of areas to explore when you're using the hip hook. You can go right next to your bone in the front of your hip and you know find a spot there, but you have lots of areas up and down along that, that where you can access that muscle that I was talking about. You know, so therefore, when you ask the question, well, like, how do I know that I'm hitting this spot? Like, how do I know that I'm getting right at where, where that muscle is? It's actually an exploration process. And each time you use the tool, your body's gonna be slightly different. The three dimensions of your body will be slightly different. So the place that you'll find the magic spot will be slightly different. But when you do find that spot, what it'll feel like, it'll feel very tender, it'll feel tight. Sometimes it'll refer some pain down your thigh. That's a trigger point. Um, and how you know that you're on a spot that is ready to be released is that after holding that pressure, and you mentioned like the, the prolonged pressure, which is very, very important, um, but after holding that pressure for about 30 seconds, it'll start to get better. That's when you know you're on something really good that's been waiting to be released and that wants to relax, um, and then over time, after that 30 seconds, it'll continue to relax until it's done relaxing um, to that point. Um, but oftentimes, you know, I tell people to find like maybe two or three spots, you know, in that, in that area that they can work on because that muscle is so big and, you know, it has a lot of real estate. Right. And I think that most of us have probably never released our iliac. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah. it, you know what I mean? So it's, yeah. it's amazing. I, I got to say, yes, because I, I learned how to use this and I used it and it's, it's crazy. And it does, it's kind of, I mean, I have a pretty high tolerance for pain and I don't mind good pain. And if you can withstand, you know, the pain for like 15, yeah. 20 seconds or whatever, and then all of a sudden you're like, oh my God, this feels so good. Yeah. And you kind of really, and then like for me, I kind of, you know, I use breathing techniques and that sort of thing mm -hmm. to kind of, the more I relax, I know the better and the deeper I'm gonna get in, right? So if you constantly are tight, and then you're tense at the same time because yeah. you're nervous, it's only going to make it more difficult yeah. in my mind, right? Yeah, exactly. It's the, you know, I mentioned this a little bit before, the two sides of the coin, like the mental tension, the physical tension. Deep breaths are an amazing way to address mental tension. Now, it helps to reduce your nervous system's response to a certain you know, situation. And so when you're on the hip hook, you know, you're, you're you know, putting pressure on a muscle that's tight anywhere in the body for that matter, you know, closing your eyes, softening your body, taking some deep breaths really helps to facilitate and allow that muscle to relax more effectively, you know, working on both sides of that, of that coin. Yeah. Right. It's amazing. So why, why the prolonged pressure? What's the importance of, and the purpose of having prolonged pressure as opposed to like, you know, kind of like just constantly pushing rubbing yeah yeah rubbing yeah rubbing and vibration are great for increasing circulation so if that's your primary goal you want to increase circulation um, it can also help with scar tissue and you know kind of like you're you're um, manipulating the tissue in a way but when a tissue is irritated and, and if you think about like a muscle for most of you that have tightness in your iliacus for example you've probably had tightness in that muscle for, for decades, maybe even longer, and without even knowing it, right? And it's creating your knee arthritis and your bunions and you know the whole, the whole bit, and you, and you have no clue. So when you put pressure on that muscle, it's actually been holding tension for so long and it's irritated. You know, I always say happy muscles don't hurt and the, that muscle is not happy. So if you think of it kind of like a wound, you know, if you got a cut on your finger, you wouldn't go and rub your, your cut, right? You would like put some pressure on it. You know, you might, you might rub around it. You might move it a teeny tiny bit, but you're not going to be rubbing it when it's already irritated, right? You want it to heal. And then maybe once it's completely healed, then you can do some scar work on it or something like that. So you got to think of it similar to that. <clears throat> you don't want to be rubbing something that is already unhappy and irritated in that way. The other important thing about why I, I, I'm such a big advocate for prolonged pressure is that a lot of these muscle knots or areas within the muscle that are holding tension actually develop into something called a trigger point. 
And a trigger point is when you muscle, you know, when you press on a particular spot in a muscle and it triggers pain somewhere else. So a lot of us, I know we'll talk about the neck in a little bit, but a lot of us will have trigger points in their upper trapezius muscle, this muscle right here. And if someone pushes on it, then you know you could actually get a headache. Or sometimes even headaches are a result of trigger points that have become activated. If you rub a trigger point, it will activate and it will give you symptoms and it won't relax. So it's like, what's the point of doing that, right? You want, the goal is to get like long-term therapeutic benefit. So in the, in, you know, trigger points respond best to prolonged pressure as well. So how often do you recommend people to use the hip hook? Is there like several times a day, once a day, like if they have, and what kind of ailments is it really ideal for people who are yeah. suffering from what kind of illnesses or aches and pains? <laughs> yeah. So if you can imagine this muscle becoming tight or pulling, it's going to pull this pelvic bone forward. It's called an anterior tilt or an anterior rotation. Um, when that gets pulled forward, it changes the way that the ball fits into the socket of the hip joint. And so basically the hip joint starts rubbing the wrong way. So you can develop hip arthritis, you can have hip joint issues, you can have labrum issues in your hip as a result of that. That pelvic bone moving forward can also irritate the SI joint because it's pulling and tugging at where this connection is here. That also, that rotation can change the rotation of your lumbar spine, which can create disc issues and nerve impingement issues there. And then working our way down the chain, when that ball doesn't fit into the socket well, it actually causes this bone to rotate in, and that rotation in <coughs> actually causes your leg, your femur, to rotate in like this, which then causes strain here. It's like a, like a stretch to your, the inside of your knee, and then a compression to the outside of your knee. So this is where people will develop like arthritis in the outside of their knee. And then the kneecap doesn't line up properly. It's like this. So then the kneecap will start to grind. And then you end up with overpronation where your foot ends up flatter and your toe can get into a bunion. So it can work its way all down the chain and you end up with a phenomenon that looks something like this. Um, so it's a big deal, you know, and these are the patterns that I identified, you know, in my practice over all those years, um, you know, it really can affect, you know, just the entire body in that way, because it is your foundation. It's like if you build on a foundation that's crooked in your house, then, you know, the walls and the windows and the doors aren't going to close right. And like, you know, everything else um, kind of come, gets out of place. Right. No, I totally, totally agree. So how often do you think people should be using it then? Is can you overuse it? I don't even <laughs> <laughs> Well, it really depends on what you're trying to solve. If you're looking, you know, for prevention and wellness, which, you know, is a huge thing for people like us as, you know, as we're aging, <laughs> you know, this, I believe that having a happy iliac and psoas is the prevention tool for hip arthritis. You know, like, I think if we start when we're young and we do it, you know, once, even if it's just like, once a month or once every other week, you know, just to get in there and make sure that muscle is happy. I think it's huge. So that's like on the prevention side, but if you're someone who's actually dealing with pain, right, and trying to resolve a particular issue, I would recommend doing that, you know, at least three times a week. Um, some people can do it every day. Some people do do it more than once a day, but I think it's important to give yourself breaks so that your body can learn how to stay relaxed on its own without the pressure. And because we're dealing with a muscle that's unhappy, right, it's possible that you might feel sore or a little bruised like, you know, like that type of sensation. So it's good to give your body a little bit of break, you know, in between. Um, and like I said, working maybe three spots um, during that period when you do use it is, is perfect. That's great. And then each for each spot, you're holding it for a minimum of, would you say 60 seconds, 30 seconds? I would say 90 seconds is a good minimum. You want to try it, you know, you want to hold it for the first 30 seconds to see whether that's a good spot because the pain should start to get better. If it doesn't get better, your body's like, you know what, I'm not ready for this. This spot's not a good spot. You know, try again tomorrow. <laughs> so it's kind of like your, your test, right? And then if things do get better, 90 seconds is perfect. That's great. That's great. It'll be the best 90 seconds of your life, I promise you. <laughs> um, so let's move to this neck shoulder area, which is 
a very sensitive area for me. I, I was just telling Christine before the call how I just used this this morning and yesterday, and uh, oh my God, it's amazing, really. I just, it, and I love the design, the aesthetics. As someone who really, my dad was an artist, Mm -hmm. And design is everything. So when you have something that's functional and looks nice, I mean, it's it's amazing. I know so I, have my, I have mine on my bookshelf. I'm like, it looks, you know, it looks so pretty out there. <laughs> it's a good coffee table, you know, conversation starter too. <laughs> it's true. Who's not going to say what is that, right? I know, exactly. <laughs> and, and how do you use that? And this, you know, <laughs> you can, <laughs> I'm sure people have all different kinds of things to say about this. <laughs> Um, so tell me about the knuckle. So what is this for and why did you invent this? Why did you create this? Yeah. So we talked about the primary core and the secondary core. This is your secondary core. This area of our body is responsible for really protecting our brain and our spinal cord, right? Um, so if you think about that, it's a pretty important job, right? And then we're using this area of our body to really collect all of the senses of the outside world. This is where we rotate our heads and this is where we're hearing and tasting and, you know, all of that. And this is the area of our body that is experiencing a lot of tension because of our modern lives of looking at our smartphones, you know, looking at our computers doing your hobbies, looking down, reading, you know, all of these things produce this kind of um, forward shoulder and forward head posture, which creates muscle tension in our bodies. Our bodies are meant to kind of line up every, all the bones in our spine and they're supposed to stack up nice and, and perfectly. And therefore, you know, we, you know, we don't have to actually use muscle, much of our muscles when that's all lined up. But the reality is, is we're not doing that, right? You know, I mean, no. who's doing that? <laughs> Nobody. <laughs> yeah, no, it's an epidemic, I think, yeah. in many ways. It is. It really is. So when you have roundedness here, that automatically pulls your head forward, right? So every little bit that we're doing out in front of us, you know, if we are, our keyboard is way out here or we're chopping vegetables way out here or whatever, we're ending up in this rounded posture with our chest. And there's a little muscle here called your pec minor. It's underneath your collarbone and attaches to your chest, which is the muscle that gets tight when we round our shoulders forward. So we've got that. So then here we are rounded forward and then our heads start to jet forward and maybe our heads are jutting forward even without that, but usually those two go together. Then we ended up adding up with tension at the base of our skull. So this is my little neck model here. <laughs> and you can see this is your skull and these are all these little muscles here and the base of your skull that connect your skull to your neck. So when your neck is forward, then these muscles will get short and tight. And that tension is one of the things that the knuckle is designed to do. So wow. pecs and neck are the main areas that, you know, and how many of you guys can relate to that, right? Like everyone. <laughs> everyone. Anybody who has a head and neck. <laughs> yeah, everyone has a head and neck. But you were mentioning um, about your experience using the knuckle and how you were feeling like some, some pain down here and that you were working up here and then how that got better. So I do want to touch on that because that's the third, you know, leg of the stool, the third piece of the puzzle. You know, all of you right now, you can, you can round your shoulders and you can touch the top of your shoulder and feel that that muscle is, is tight right? If you go and you sit up nice and tall, get your neck up on top of your shoulders, that muscle softens. It's not tight anymore. So Wow, that's so true. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's like magic. <laughs> <laughs> so tension here, and you know, using this posture and ten tension at the base of your skull and your pec actually causes tension in this upper trap muscle, which is a big one for headaches and, and a lot of different things too. And it limits your shoulder range of motion. So if you're in that same rounded shoulder position and you try to lift your arm up over your head, what happens is you end up pinching your rotator cuff in between these two bones. But if you're up like this, woohoo, you've got all full range of motion and it's easy as can be. So these are like the, you know, I was talking about what are the key areas of the body that are at the source or the cause of so many other things. Your pec minor, the base of the skull, are it, you know, which is why I created the knuckle to be able to address both of those areas of the body. Wow. So you have, I know you have like three different angles, right? So there's the wide, medium, and narrow. 
Mm -hmm. So tell me, why did you design it this way? And how do you actually use this? Yeah, basically, in essence, you, you know, you lay it on the ground and then you lie on top of it. Easy. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're working on the neck, that's how you do it. But you have lots of options, right? You can, you can have it in this direction. You can have it here. Um, and I designed each of these different configurations to be slightly different angles in relationship to your neck and your head. You know, you can turn it this way or this way and different distances apart. So if you imagine your spine in the center and then these two tips are touching the muscles on the side of your spine, you can address different muscles. And I'll show you that on this little skeleton here. So you can see we have muscles that are closer to the spine in the middle you know, which this tip would work really good at. If I use the medium sized tip, it goes a little further apart, right? And then even further apart here with the wider tip. And you, same for all these muscles as you work your way down the spine too. Each of them can be addressed closer to the spine or further away from the spine. And these tips are designed to be really specific. So they're really targeting one muscle at a time. If you lie in something that is not designed to target the muscle, it's maybe more general, let's say a tennis ball, a racquetball, something like that, you'll kind of just get this general area and you'll be pressing on all the muscles at once and it won't be as effective as releasing one muscle at a time. Right. And I can yeah. tell you that when I used it, it literally, I put it at the base of my skull and I just felt like this whole thing just like, whoosh, like yeah. it, it was incredible. Because I do hold a lot of tension here. I'm constantly like this, you know. It's, mm -hmm. um, you know, like all of us walk around like this, you know, yep. so it's, that's supposed to be natural or something. Um, and that's, that's another thing with stress, too. We talked about stress with the, the primary cord, the secondary cord. I mean, this is what we do when we're stressed. You know, we curl, we protect ourselves this way. Our shoulders go up. Um, so it's, a, it's, no, it's no mystery why we all have tension in that area. Right. And you can also use this for your pecs. Yeah, yep. As well. Yeah, so just leaning up against, like if this was the wall, you know, if the wall was here, um, I just could lean up against the wall and put pressure um, on the pec minor, which is that muscle I was talking about that rounds you forward. Um, and you can use different angles, you know, you could twist it a little bit this way potentially um, to get in there underneath the collarbone and put pressure there. Same, same deal with the 30 to 90 seconds we talked about with the hip hook too. Yeah. And this is also amazing. Amazing. Yeah. Cause I, I also use this for my pecs as well. Cause mm -hmm. I know I was asthmatic as a kid. So I kind of just, mm -hmm. I blame it on that. And then, you know, and then being hunched over a computer and all that kind of stuff is definitely created more of an issue, but this really helps to, to, I, cause I was constantly doing this with my hands, yeah. but this being able to use this pressure is so much more effective. It's more precise. You know, the, all of these things are designed to really mimic what you could get when you go see a skilled practitioner, you know, it's, it's much different to, you know, you'd be fumbling around with your own fingers and not be able to hold the pressure long enough or not be able to give direct enough pressure, you know, you get such better results. Um, when, when it, you know, it's really precise and exactly where you need it, when you need it. So as we kind of wrap this up, um, so what is your advice in terms of people who are seeking some sort of, um, I guess, I don't know. I, I feel like, cause people can use both of these. I mean, anybody can use this. It doesn't, like you said, right. It's not necessarily for prevention, uh, not necessarily, you know, once you're sick or once yep. you have severe issues, um, but to use it as prevention as well. And I am a huge advocate for prevention. Like, let's just Yay. not have to have a hip replacement. I know, know right? Like, why? <laughs> no, why not? It's an idea. Um, so, I mean, like, yeah, so to kind of use it in a healthy way, is there kind of advice that you see people, like maybe, you know, people who've been using it now, you yourself, we've been using it now for a little while. Yeah what is the ideal kind of way to use it to incorporate it into their lifestyle um both both um devices i know i'm like <laughs> <laughs> your babies <laughs> you know I pain guess. sucks you know what it i mean and when, you can, when you can find something that can relieve the pain that's not yeah. you know putting a pill in your body or whatever it's amazing yeah 
I guess, you know, I would just pull that out one step further and just really recognize the role that muscle tension plays in our health and wellness. It's, it hasn't really gotten its I mean, everyone calls themselves tight, right? We all like experience tightness, but we don't value that as something that is a primary aspect to our health and wellness. And it is, you know, tension is just a manifestation of your body feeling unsafe, you know? And, and, and so we, by releasing tension, you allow your nervous system and your brain to actually feel safe and feel well and feel vital, feel free, you know, feel like, you know, you can accomplish what you are, what you want to accomplish. I have worked with many people who come into my office, not, not necessarily for pain, but also for their mental health, you know, and doing treatments like cranial sacral therapy and, and other modalities to help support that aspect. And even in that situation, I have found how important releasing muscle tension at the base of the skull, pec minor, and the hip flexors were for the functioning of their nervous system and their ability to get out of the anxiety or depression or whatever that they were experiencing. Mm -hmm.